Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. My name is Gats. I'm a lover of all things weird and creepy for those of you that don't know. For those of you that do, thank you so much for coming back. It's so good to have you here. If this is your first time here, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and turn that bell icon on. Before I even get started with this video, I want to say thank you so much for 17,000 subscribers. That number is unreal to me. I don't even know what to say. I can't believe that it's real, but thank you so much. I'm sure you can tell by the title of today's video. This is going to be a part two of a three-part video series. We're going to be reading parts two and three of the sleep experiment a story that i found on reddit if you have not seen part one pause this video stop this video i'll link it down below go watch that first and then come back here but and i think we should just read it because i'm super eager to know what happens all right so before i start reading part one leaves off with day three at the end of the evening um, we have a shadow figure or a dark figure that's being seen. People are already kind of starting to go crazy and there's a little bit of drama and a finger's been chopped off. So, with that being said, let's get started with part two. I'm going to start off by answering this one question that everyone had about the experiment. Question. I've stayed awake for X amount of days and I don't go crazy like that. Answer. Keep in mind that you may not be on stimulant gas when you stay awake for your own work. The stimulant gas actually prevents the penile gas from producing any melatonin. So the participants do not feel the need to sleep and the brain is not aware if it should sleep or not. That's the main aim of this experiment, to find out how long the brain is capable of going without sleep. So usually, if there were no stimulant gas involved, the participants would be fine for longer, as their brain would shift into a phenomenon known as microsleep. In this case, the participant's mind does not even know whether it should sleep or not. Another reason for the worst effects are probably due to the fact that we force our participants to also complete day-to-day -day tasks and to cook their own food. This puts extra pressure on the brain. They are also not provided coffee or energy drinks. Many of the participants noted to use their electronics more after day two night, which might also contribute to the effects. Now let's continue with the logs. Day four. Dr. Warnicke noted that all participants are no longer accidentally dozing off into sleep and they all remain awake at all times. This is probably an effect of the stimulant gas. Julia has been painting in her room since the morning. She's drawing paintings of a woman with bloodied hair and several wounds in her abdomen. The woman's face is never painted in each of the paintings. Surprisingly, the paintings are very high quality and well painted. She drew about 10 paintings in four hours. She stopped after she ran out of paint and canvas. We will deliver more canvas and paint to her room through the food larder type cupboard we put in her room. Dr. Wen suspects that Julia may be thinking about harming Sophia as illustrated in the paintings. Dr. Williams disagrees. Adam has moved from his bed to the corner in his room where the presumed dark figure is. He is standing facing the corner and has been standing motionless since morning. His brain waves are those of a person in REM sleep. His heart rate is concerningly low at 50 BPM. Connor has stopped whispering to himself and went down to make breakfast in the morning. He fried his eggs and milk and ate them. Our medical team will be monitoring him in case he falls ill. Connor has typed up unintelligible things in his office work today. Sleep is for the weak. I am not weak, for I do not sleep. I will rise strong. I am winning all along. Ethan is going to beat me. No, he won't. Please, I want to sleep, 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 sleep. Dr. Williams speculates that Connor is experiencing auditory hallucinations and is subconsciously typing the conversations up. This can be useful to provide insight into his feelings. Connor seems to be paranoid of Ethan. Sophia is standing outside Julia's bedroom, staring at the door. She's not tried opening the door. Ethan has broken his laptop after losing an online game. He threw it at the floor. We are deciding whether we should provide him a new one. After that, Ethan went down to the kitchen, grabbed a knife, and started cutting up pieces of butter and eating them raw. He will also be medically monitored. Samantha is reading the books that we have provided for her. She has been doing that since the morning. After finishing one book, she repeated the phrase, I will sleep soon, 420 times, and then she picked out another book. She is the most stable out of all participants. Day four, night. Julia went out of her room while Sophia was still standing outside of the door. We only know that Sophia attacked Julia, as only Dr. Williams was on night shift at the time. She refused to recount what happened and was quite hysterical. Dr. Warnicke sent Williams home for a few days. Based on the camera feeds, we can currently see traces of Julia's intestines can be seen in Sophia's room while the rest of her body lies in her room. Her eyes are missing. Sophia has returned to her room and is sitting there staring at the wall. She has painted random shapes of Julia's blood on the wall. We locked away Julia's room and extracted her body. Dr. Warnicke, the relieving coordinator, decided to keep the experiment running. 
Dr. Warren Key advised us not to look through the past recording to see what really happened with Julia. We have also yet to listen to Connor's recordings. Adam went out of his room for the longest time today and walked around the house chanting things. He returned to his room after being unable to access Sophia's room since she locked it. Day 5. Dr. Chowdhury was found unexpectedly dead in his home today, bringing the death toll of this experiment to two. Dr. Williams is now on watch and all of us have to live inside experiment HQ for the remainder of the experiment. Dr. Warnicke has called in another doctor who did not tell us his name. He appears to be from the higher government and he's taken our video logs and audio logs of Connor for further study. Luckily, I saved my copies before they came. Today, Samantha ran out of books. We purposely did not provide her any more to see her reaction. She experienced severe psychosis. She started screaming at us. Why don't you guys just leave me alone? Do you find this amusing? I want to sleep. I can't. She then repeated this 25 times while pulling out her hair. She then managed to compose herself and went down to the games room. She asked Ethan if he could play ping pong with her when she saw Connor and him playing. Ethan agreed and she won from him every game. This made Ethan extremely agitated and he started to show signs of physical aggression. Samantha quickly ran to her room. Ethan ran after her and he kept trying to break into her door for at least five hours. Samantha was crying hysterically in her room. I will get some sleep now. More logs are coming soon. All right, so now we're moving into part three of the sleep experiment. I've noticed that some of you were concerned about the ethics of the experiment in my past post. The thing is, this experiment has received heaps of funding from the government in order to research further into the unknown science of sleep. Every volunteer in this experiment has agreed to all this, so no legal implications apply to us. Anyways, I have transcribed some more logs. I'm starting from day 10 because the rest of the days nothing really happened. Every day was the same. Day 10. Today was rather calm compared to yesterday. All participants stayed in their rooms. Ethan has taken a ping pong ball and racket to his room. He played against a wall for six hours. Surprisingly, he returned most of the shots. We provided Samantha with more books today. We need her to stay sane so we could study exactly how her brain copes. She immediately went and picked up the books as soon as she heard them drop into her cupboard and thanked us 153 times. She then started reading the books. Connor spent his whole day in the office room today, typing up a document. It's transcribed here. What is sleep? Why can't I sleep? How do you sleep? Please tell me. And then there's a whole bunch of symbols. Connor can sleep. He sleeps every day, yet I remain awake. Adam says he's trying to find sleep. He told me sleep sits in his corner. And then there's more symbols. We are unsure whether Connor is referring to the presumed dark figure in Adam's room. Sophia was extremely calm and composed today. She scrolled through social media on her phone and even listened to some music. It looks like killing Julia has calmed her down. Adam has started spreading salt around the house. He is also chanting things Dr. Wynn realized that he was chanting Latin. We tried to translate it as best we can. Sleep is running away from me. Away from the thing that sits in the corner. Sleep come back. Sleep come back. Death is coming. Sleep and death, both the same. He chanted this over a hundred times while spreading salt around the house. He was unable to enter Sophia's room because she blocked it. He called out to her and she opened the door. He went inside her room and spread the salt. Sophia did not stop him. He did the same with Connor's room. Ethan did not allow him inside his room. Adam lingered around Ethan's room for a few minutes and kept calling his name. Ethan then came out and punched him straight in the stomach. Adam fell backwards from the force. Ethan went back to his room. Adam stayed in the position and stared at Ethan's door for five hours. He then got up also went to Samantha's room, where he spread salt. All participants did not eat or drink today. Our medical team will be monitoring their health. Day 10, night. At night, all the participants started screaming at literally the top of their voices at exactly 12 a.m. They changed their pitches around and it was almost like a rough violin piece. Then suddenly we saw Ethan struggling in his room. He was laying down in his bed and it looked like an invisible person was choking him. He was clutching at his throat. We soon realized he was actually choking himself. We didn't interfere because it's physically impossible to choke yourself to death with your own hands. We stared for an eternity until Ethan finally released his hold on his neck and fell still. We checked his pulse. None. Our medical team extracted him immediately. We were able to resuscitate him. He lies unconscious in intensive care for now. We are planning to interview him when he feels well. Dr. Wynn has also been sent home due to shock from the experiment. Day 11. Adam seems extremely uneasy today. He keeps on looking up at the hidden cameras. It seems like he knows exactly where the cameras are, even though they've been well hidden. He stares directly at them. Samantha stopped reading. 
She went down to make herself breakfast today. She took the whole salt bottle and poured it all down her throat. Our medical team is standing by for any symptoms of poisoning. She then went into Sophia's room and stared at her doorway for at least 10 minutes. Sophia stared back. Sophia then threw her phone at Samantha. The phone hit her nose really hard and we suspect it's broken. She bled but continued staring at Sophia. Sophia then started screaming. Samantha continued staring. Sophia started to scratch her eyes. We shocked Sophia in hopes that she would stop and to prevent lasting damage to her eyesight. Sophia stared straight at the camera and let out a high-pitched scream. She went down to the kitchen and started to cut her nose off. We gave her high-voltage shocks, but she didn't stop and cut her nose off. She then put her nose in her mouth and ate it. Dr. Williams has resigned. I'm the only one left. Dr. Warnke. The end is near. I can feel it. Day 12. Samantha is showing signs of remorse at her previous action and has bandaged what remains of her nose. Her blood oxygen levels constantly fluctuated throughout the day. Sophia and Connor exited their rooms at the exact same time and both walked into the game's room. They played a game of pool without communicating at all. Halfway throughout the game, Sophia used a pool stick to extract her left eye. She used it to play pool. Connor copied her. They then both started laughing hysterically. Adam went downstairs as well and filled up a Coke bottle with water. He then started splashing it at all the walls in the house. He chanted the following in Latin. Ethan. Ethan thinks he's safe. Sleep is out to get him. It is death that I gave Warnicky. Warnicky knows the end. He tends to us. He sends to us. One day the barriers of the house will bend. Dr. Wynn has returned to take over for me. Dr. Warnicky, I need a break before I get burned at the stake. I'm going to take a break now. I'll post the remaining log soon. Life is but a dream to the dead. Gerard Way. All right, you guys, that is it for parts two and three of the sleep experiment. I hope you like this video. If you do, make sure to give it a big thumbs up. I don't know how I feel. I think everything kind of got crazy really fast. Let me know what you think in the comments below and also let me know what types of videos you want to see in the future. But until next time, stay safe. I'll see you guys later. Bye.